Today's gadget comes with a long, scary-looking needle. With this, you can meld your phone with your body to measure blood glucose levels. Fitness trackers are, are very common these days, uh, like this Oura ring, which measures sleep and activity levels, or something like this O2 sensor, which monitors oxygen levels, or a Fitbit. These are all examples of something called quantified self, which Wiki defines as knowledge through numbers. By measuring something, you can not only improve it, but you can gamify it to help improve your enthusiasm for doing that. Something sometimes may not be so fun, like exercise. This device is called a continuous glucose monitor, CGM. It helps diabetics keep their blood glucose within a healthy range. It's also useful for non-diabetic people to help us see how our food, how we react to various foods, keep us from becoming diabetic or pre-diabetic. The two most popular CGMs are uh, this one from Dexcom and this one. It's called the Freestyle Libre from Abbott Labs. The Dexcom one is really pricey. There's a reader which costs hundreds of dollars, and each sensor costs about hundred dollars and lasts for about two weeks. These freestyle ones are still pretty pricey, about $60 each for a two-week sensor, but they use NFC with your phone so that they don't require a separate reader. Despite the long, scary needle, the application really is pretty easy and painless. You can apply it to either your arm, your waist, or your leg. My first sensor lasted less than a week after I bumped it, my arm on a door jam, so this time I'm installing it on my waist. Uh, it comes with its own applicator. First you load the sensor into the applicator and then a simple press will inject the needle and stick it onto your skin. It really is painless, I, I promise. Taking it off is also easy. It pulls off like a band-aid. Now if you may want to add extra tape to it, like I did with my arm here, to keep it from dislodging if you accidentally bump it. If you're using an iPhone, you bring up the app and click on the scan button and then tap your phone to your sensor to activate the NFC. Sometimes it takes a couple taps to register it. Then it brings up the last eight hours of readings. If you have an Android phone, it's a lot easier. As long as your phone is on, you just tap it. Doesn't, you don't have to start the app first. So I spent a couple weeks eating 100 calories of a whole bunch of different foods in a mostly fasted state. I'm on this one meal a day diet now, so I was in a fasted state most of the day, so, so I could do this test pretty easily. Then I created a blog post, link below, that show how my blood sugar changed in that two hour window after eating these various foods. Here's a quick overview. So here's an example of a typical day. I've been doing this time-restricted eating thing for about a year, so you can see I started eating around six o'clock, um, spikes up to 140, and then I'm snacking till about 10. Then as the night goes on, it gradually goes down to about 90, and then in the morning I wake up and do some exercises, and I back up a bit, and then throughout the day uh, goes down, and just before dinner I get to a level of about, a pre-fast blood glucose level of about 80. And this is a summary of a typical two weeks, uh, the variances in the day-by-day -day plots. Uh, so for another two weeks, so I got two sensors. One first sensor I did typical readings and then another sensor I did an experiment where I ate 100 calories of a variety of foods. So these are pictures of the foods sorted by weight. Um, half an ounce of butter, uh, seven tenths of an ounce of peanut butter. Doesn't take much chocolate to get 100 calories of food or peanuts and your sugar. And so we go down the list and you can see as we get into the healthier foods, uh, the, the, uh, we get a lot more bulk and fiber with them, like bananas and potatoes. And you get all the way down to, uh, like you can have a whole bowl of strawberries for that same 100 calories that you had a couple of small chunks of chocolate for. So that really gave me an appreciation for um, the health of uh, foods with a lot of fiber in them. In these charts, I'm sorting those same foods by the blood glucose response level. So if you take just pure sugar, 100 calories of sugar is about um, 24 grams of sugar, uh, you get the biggest peak. So it went up to 200, I think it was. 
Uh, you can see also that grape juice and raisins almost identical peaks because they have almost the same amount of sugar. 100 calories of raisins has 22 grams of sugar. Uh, I used to love raisins, but now I'm a little more apprehensive of them. Then as you go down, you can see um, most of the fruits will have uh, some peaks, not as quite as bad as sugar because they have more fiber in them and it takes longer to digest. And then you'll get down into the starches, your buckwheats and your potatoes, oatmeal. And then you get down into your uh, protein and fatty foods and those have mostly flat responses. Uh, here's an interesting one, wine, which is basically the same, made of the same thing as grape juice, it's just fermented, has a totally flat response because all of the sugar in the grape juice has been converted to alcohol. So it's another interesting observation is you can take, it's the amount of sugar in the food you have that makes a difference. So if I take 50 calories of raisins, I have no response, it's flat. Double that to 100 calories of raisins, 22 grams of sugar, it peaks somewhat. But if you double that into uh, 44 calories of, uh, sorry, 200 calories of raisins, 44 grams of sugar, it gets way up into that 180 range. This is effectively what is called a glucose tolerance test. This is a common test usually done with pure sugar, uh, 70 grams of sugar. This is about half that. Uh, what you'll see in a healthy individual is what you have here, not to brag that I'm healthy, but I still have insulin response. And the body detects a bunch of sugar, it releases a bunch of insulin, and the blood glucose goes down fairly quickly. In a pre-diabetic or a diabetic person, what you'll see is the same initial response, but it tails off much slower because although the body's releasing insulin, you're, it's numb to insulin because they've had too much of it over the years. So if you get a response that comes down quickly, you, you're in better, a lot better shape. Another interesting observation is that if you mix uh, high fat or protein foods in with the sugary foods, you're much better off. Here's 100 calories of banana, here's 100 calories of yogurt, and if I eat them at the same time, 200 calories total, uh, we have a, a smaller bump. The same thing with um, raisins and peanuts. So my takeaway is that you, you do want to minimize the sugar spikes you get because eventually that was what will numb your cells to the response of insulin. So for me, that means I want to avoid eating uh, 15 grams of sugar by itself, like a handful of raisins. Um, eating bulky high fiber fruits is good because it fills me up. As long as I limit myself to one serving and or mixing it with other foods, then we're in good shape. But everybody's different. It, you know, the glucose is stored in your liver and your muscle mass. So depending on how much muscle mass you have, you may be able to tolerate more or less sugar. Also, your gut biome, as we're discovering recently, is, uh, dictates a lot of the response to the sugar because different microbes in your gut process thing food differently so the only way to know for sure what your blood sugar response will be it, to various foods is to measure it so uh, don't go out and get one of these things and don't don't let the needle scare you Abbott Labs recently announced that they're targeting athletes now for these freestyle libres they can uh, help the athletes uh, monitor their uh, food, their diet, and their exercise and, uh, to see how their blood glucose reacts so that they can come up with optimal strategies for peak performance. They also announced a new version, smaller, and uses Bluetooth rather than uh, NFC, so you don't have to scan it every eight hours. It's really truly a continuous monitor like the Dexcom version. That's uh, available now in Europe, It'll come to the U.S. hopefully next year. Unfortunately, these devices, for whatever reason, in the U.S. require prescriptions. You'll need to get your pre-CP, your primary care physician, to write a script. I hope and expect at some point that they'll become available over the counter. For non-diabetics, you would really only need to do this test once or maybe once a year. 
and get a good feel for how your body reacts to various foods. Not too expensive, $60 to steer you in a better direction for eating more healthy. Seems like a good deal. So that'll be it for this week. Thanks for watching. See you next time.